Moi! My name is Jana, and you're watching Finnish Knitting Stories, episode number 90. Uh, while taking notes, I just realized it's gonna be a bit of a holiday themed. So if it's not your thing, maybe you could wait for the next one, which is probably also gonna be holiday themed, I'm sorry. But yeah, I'm already in a Christmas mood, and that's what we will be talking about, a lot of holiday related projects. So, welcome or welcome back. I'm coming to you from my craft room here in southern Finland. It's a bit overcast, a bit snowy Saturday. Yes, Saturday, because yesterday I did not have a good day. <laughs> uh, so I'm recording on a Saturday. Hubby took the, the lit, our little one to the grocery store and our son is playing in his room and I have a I have a little moment to sit down and chat with you about knitting. That's what we're gonna be talking about. You can find me on Instagram as Kittonitz and on Ravelry as Kittonitz and on Ko-fi and Patreon as Finnish Knitting Stories. And everything I talk about will be in the description box down below. If I sound a bit nasally, I apologize because I think flu is is getting to me as well. Okay, <laughs> how have you been? I hope you've been all right. I have not been all right, but we will talk about that bit in the knitting, knitting chat at the end. So what I'm wearing today, would you like to know? I, I decided to be a bit festive, so I put on my, my advent knit from two years ago, which is, sorry, I have something in my eye, <laughs> which is a striped sweater by Andrea Mori that I knit using, using an advent from the Fiber Fox. And it was a fade and yeah, it's a bit wrinkly. I pulled it out of the closet and, but... I love it. it. It always brings me a bit of a festive, festive mood. The pattern is for sports weight, but I knit mine in fingering and it's just, it's just fine. I just went size down. It is wrinkling here a bit, so maybe not the most successful pattern out there. I have another one I prefer for a rounded yoke, but oh well, it's fine. And then I have my lovely... Uh, a red, <laughs> a red pan, <laughs> teapot earrings with a bun and mug. And these are from Design by Kieto. They are Finnish makers, designers, and they create beautiful things from plywood. Okay, uh, not sponsored. Bought it with my own money. <laughs> uh, let's dive into finished objects because I'm not sure how much time do I have. I need to be fast today, so it will... Yeah, I have a lot of content and I need to try to fit it in a in a short amount of time. I have one, two, three, I guess, three finished objects. Um, yeah, let's start with the first one. Uh, it's done, it's blocked, it's finished and it's, it's going into my gift pile. Sophia's hot water bottle cover. I'll tell you straight away, I do not have patterns for the hot water bottle covers I'm making because I'm just winging it. There are a lot of free ones and a lot of paid ones out there uh, and I'm not using any of them. <laughs> I'm just using my own because I use usually yarn that is not very typical like this is made in Finnish shape wool which is like a plump fingering so uh, the fingering weight stitch stitch count wouldn't probably work for it, like or it would be it would be too too loose. So I usually make a swatch, measure my bottle because bottles also come in different sizes. I have noticed that, and different shapes. And there is bottle already inside. This one is made in Germany by a brand Fashi. I don't know the one I could get from from the local pharmacy. So, yeah, there are my pictures, and it's a bit of a garden themed. There are carrots and bunnies and flowers and watering cans and butterflies. And I drew these myself. I just took a graph paper and was playing around with it. Not everything was successful at first on first attempt. And I had issues with bunnies that you couldn't really see them because they were in a 
they were in the same white yarn as this gray and they were just you could not tell that they are bunnies and then I took a fluffy drops brushed alpaca silk just to had a bit of a leftover just white one and I duplicate stitched over the bunnies and it's same on the other side as well and then for the neck ribbing I just used all the colors from from these from my little pictures <laughs> from my little pattern yeah so and I did do the lining one more thing I get this question a lot there is something no I got it uh, <laughs> I get this question a lot I don't know why <laughs> but people keep asking me do I knit around it and then the bottle is not removable no absolutely not I don't knit around it I just try it on and bottle is removable you just squish it and then you pull it out for everybody wondering about it you it is fully removable cover you can wash it you can clean it and yeah it comes out <laughs> it comes out just in case you're wondering and I'll show you the inside. The inside has lining. It has a gray lining in this same yarn, which I, what I did, I, I cast on a few less stitches than for this. I knit the same kind of thing, just in gray. I turned it inside out and then I stuffed it in and then I knitted the neck. This ribbing, neck ribbing, keeps the both things together. I... I knit the stitches together so the lining is permanently attached in there which makes it a bit thicker because it is a fingering weight yarn and it felt a bit too thin to be functional. So now it's nice and thick and I, I really really like it and here I held the yarns double for, for, for this. So that's that's my first Christmas gift. I have started on a Christmas list and I'm I'm plowing through it. I know I'm late. I'm not one of those people who can start in January or even in like July or even in September. I start in November and raise your hand if you're like me. We are not very adult and responsible knitters, are we? But we don't have to be because this is this is fun and I only make knit gifts for the people that I, my closest people that I love very, very much. <laughs> they are very knit worthy people. And yes, I, I believe in a term knit worthy because you put all that effort, you put a bit of your heart in every piece you make and then you give it to someone who will just toss it in a corner and never use it. No. My my hours of the day are too precious to waste them like that, so I only knit for people who I know will use it and love it and appreciate it. And my family is on that list, every one of them. <laughs> um, I'm so lucky my kids love my knits. And Sophia is all the time asking for something. And our oldest kiddo, he's not that often asking, but when he asks, I drop everything and knit it straight away because he asked for something. <laughs> so... Yes, that's the first one into my gift pile. And then I have another one, which is not in a gift. Where is it? Oh, there. It's the same thing, but it's not for a gift in the, for a gift pile. It's for me. It's for my own pleasure. It was my comfort knit. <laughs> oh, look, we match. <laughs> Very festive. Um, I, I don't know. If you have watched my vlogmas two years ago, you probably remember that I had a fiber advent from Lake House Mood. It was hanging there in beautiful bags. Uh, and then I spun it up. And I have even used a bit of it into previous projects prior to that. They were sweaters and tops. And yeah. And by the way, side note, I got a fiber add-on this year as well from the lake house mode cat has a lovely etsy store go check her out you probably can't get advent anymore but she has a lot of other nice things she has yarn there and and a lot of nice things so yes so i bought i bought fiber advent as well but about that we will talk we will talk about that in pre-vlogmas but here is the what's left from my fiber advent from two years ago I spun them up just randomly, <laughs> randomly little bits of minis. Uh, I think they were 20 grams. Yes, 
I don't remember. They feel like, or were they 10 grammars? I think 20. Not sure. Sorry. And mine came out somewhere between, I would say DK weight, somewhere around DK weight. So I was looking at them there in my shelf and I was thinking, oh, they would make an awesome hot water, water bottle cover. Because I have one as well. And my cover was dreadful. It was like an acrylic horror. <laughs> the one that came with the bottle. Then I bought more bottles without the covers, but that first one has been with us for a very long time and it needed a new cover. Which is actually not this bottle. That bottle is still without the cover, but already. <laughs> That's coming next. Like, not today, but somewhere in the future I'll make another one. So I just made, made one with my hand spun. And I think this one is so much fun. Here I just held the yarn single. There was no lining. It's just this fun, fun little thing. I played with colors. I striped it a bit. I used less than 100 grams for this whole thing. Less than 100 grams of the, of the hand spun. So if you're making it in a DK weight, uh, one skein probably is enough. And yeah, just a very quick, fun project. And here I needed my own stitch count as well. You start here, you cast it on like for a toe up sock. We each own, each of us probably has own preferred method. I just use the one where you wrap it around two needles and then, and then yeah, like you start knitting in the round, like with the looping. So yeah. And then you do increases here, then you knit straight, and then you do sharp decreases up here. And then I just do two by two ribbing for the neck, and that's pretty much it. Not a rocket science, but I know there are several free patterns on Ravelry. I could try to look for one and maybe link it down below. I don't know, some basic one. Or you can just yourself search for hot water bottle cover on Ravelry or somewhere else. Uh... Love it. So that's my second finished object. My third finished object is also winter themed, winter related. And it's it's for Sophia. But it's not gonna go into gift pile. It, it will she will start using them after I show them to you because it's winter outside. I made her teeny tiny mittens. And the yarn is wool with Angora that we bought last year in December at the Christmas market. She chose it herself and she wanted mittens with it. And I still actually have half ball left. It was somewhere between DK and like worsted. I'm not sure. Somewhere there. Um, it didn't have any labels. I know that it's like a ma made in Finland, like locally made. And with ethically sourced wool and no bunnies were harmed in the process. They were brushed and loved and yeah. So, and I have more of this yarn. Uh, the pattern that I used was the basic, like the basic mitten pattern by Tin Can Knits. It's a free one. That's where I took the cast on numbers and then I winked it because I also added a cable. The cable is not in the pattern. And here, yeah, this is my own <laughs> adjustment because, yeah, because of the cable. I needed to do it in a different way. Um, but yeah, here are two teeny, teeny tiny little mittens with a bit of uh, cabling because I didn't want them just plain. I think white mittens deserve cables. They need cables. I don't know, for some reason, I think cables look awesome in white. My Probably my favorite color for the cables. It's blowing out. Wait, there. It's a very simple eight stitch cable. Like you cross the first two and two one direction and then the second like four, two and two another direction. Uh, and every fourth row, I think. But yeah. There, now she can wear them. And they are lovely and warm and and so tiny. But so is she. <laughs> She's... No. How do... Yeah, there. <laughs> I have giant hands. I, I, I do. I do. Uh... Okay. Those are all my finished objects for today. And then I will show you... One, two, three, four, five whips. Most of them new cast-ons. 
whoops, uh, all holiday related. I'm sorry if you're not into Christmas and holiday knitting, but some of them are just winter themed. They are not like, and some of them are very much holiday themed. Okay, let's, let's start with the first one. That's right here. And this one is also kind of like a gift knit, but kind of, yeah, not. Uh, Sophia's school is having their traditional Christmas, like a sales happening market day. And I will be donating a gnome. I decided on a gnome because before I have done a hat, I have done a cowl and something else probably. And now it's a gnome. By Sarah Shira, and this is the one where where you build like your own gnome. Choose choose your own gnome adventure. Choose your gnome adventure. You can see it on the screen. The proper name of that pattern. And I love Sarah's gnomes. And yes, I did buy the mystery gnome pattern that is that is coming out in December. There is. I have not been very successful with mystery gnomes before, because. Once I get in the zone, I just want to knit the whole thing. I can't just knit a bit and then stop. Uh, here I have, because I, I had to. <laughs> um, and yeah, I need to finish it this, this weekend and send it off to school. So if you are from our neck of the woods and you would like and adopt a very handsome fella, there will be a sales happening. Is it next, I think, Wednesday? at the school <laughs> not here but in the city i i'm not gonna say which school but if you're interested send me a message i'll tell you which school and what time like if you're from around here and you would like to to bring home this this fella he's not in a finished sheep wool and i dyed the green and the red one myself and the gray one is natural sheep color and he will have a nose he will have a beard and then we will see what else i had a bag of little bells somewhere if i find it i'll attach a little jingle bell here on the tip of his hat yeah so now he's just sitting on a ball of green yarn because i need to stuff it and stuff it and then do do the little finishing details yes and I, i'm knitting it on a wooden dpns because that's how i love knitting my gnomes on dpns i don't know why uh okay next next festive knit or winter knit my chestnut dress i've made some amount of progress some amount of progress on it chestnut dress pattern by petite knit i'm knitting mine in a nutidin color amanita nutidin swedish unspun uh held together with isiger silk mohair in color 32 yes i remember the number okay and it lives in my <laughs> very not so festive ikea <laughs> project bag from the kitchen section <laughs> okay where am i oh no 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 oh guess what guess who lost the stitches because stoppers are not here i'm very bad at remembering the stoppers i have a lot of stoppers now thanks to my lovely viewers who have who have sent me a lot of stoppers and i just wish they would came with a note that post it on a bag that please use them <laughs> okay i think i saved managed to save my stitches but i don't want to rip my yarn it's very fragile construction here but yeah uh that's the that's the front yes i'm showing you the front i have finished the neck the neck ribbing and it's nice and loose and it will be so cozy comfy yay so cozy comfy yay and i'll show you where i am on the body i'm here we are probably around halfway through maybe not yet but through the body i mean i think i should do the sleeves next and then see how much yarn i have but oh this is gonna be so good look at it look at it so good i can't wait and guess what I did? I did a tub tubular. <laughs> I did a 
two polar bind off <laughs> on this thing. Wanna ask me how? I'll tell you, I'll tell you my secret. I took a bit of nutidin and I spun it up on my wheel. You can also do it on a or on, on, on your spindle or whatever you have or ask a friend because this makes the difference. It makes your life so much easier if you spin it up. In worst case, just fold it in your hands and make a ball. Like if you can't spin it up, it will make your life easier. I will use this for the <laughs> arms and the bottom ribbing as well. If I don't have enough, I'll spin up some more because I I do not recommend doing, doing, yeah, sewn bind off with the unspun. Just don't save your nerves and don't do that. This is the key. Actually could have also done it with more hair held double. Huh? No, we have options, but don't do it in unspun. It's a nightmare. Like there is no chance of pulling it out in one piece, like, Little tip. <laughs> uh, there. Okay. I have a hope to finish it in, in month of December. I, I still have hope. Plus, I've been on, on a bed rest yesterday. I didn't need much. Like, not at all, actually, except in the evening. But, yeah, later about that. I still... Let's do a couple of more cast-ons. Okay, I cast on a pair of socks. For the kiddo, for the big kiddo, because he does not have Christmas socks. His foot has grown tremendously. Nothing fits. We have got all the new things for him. New winter boots and new autumn boots. And he will probably need new skiing boots. And woof. <laughs> you know, kids, they grow. Um, it's a beginning. <laughs> Don't get too excited. It's a beginning, but it's an elf sock. It's an elf sock. It will have green heels, cuffs and toes. And then it's a red and white self-striping, which was my own from several years ago. And it's a skein that I accidentally cut in half. <laughs> Don't ask how. Tired, late, very tired yarn dyer. And it's just, yeah, just red and white stripes. So I had to keep it, which is good. And it's been waiting two years in a closet because last year they didn't need new Christmas socks and this year they do and very very green <laughs> uh, this actually used to be a set that's how it came it came with a green mini and and self-striping skein I have not done them yet this year and I'm not sure if I will if I will manage because of some things that has happened lately <laughs> well we'll see but yeah love it and i think sophia wants the same and i was thinking i could do her cuff heel and toe in pink but she saw the green and she also wants the green so they will have matching matching socks and first time i have cast on for the kiddo 60 stitches last year it was still 56 now it's 60 stitches so basically uh, an adult size like um, yeah <sighs> They grow, time flies, kids grow, and yeah, <laughs> I'm not coping well with that, I think. <laughs> okay, my next holiday cast on is, again, nothing much, I just cast it on. Can you guess what it's going to be? Like this. White blue clay with a little leftover of Isagur silk mohair that I used in another hat. And this is color E0, like the first just white, natural white one. So it's a 2 by 2 ribbed uh, brim for a Santa hat, like an elf hat. Because this one is Sophia's. Because here is her old hat. I brought it and it's too small. And it has a hole ripped in it. I don't know what did she do, but at the end of the season last year, she came home from school with a hole in her hat from preschool. Yeah, she wasn't yet in a school, but yeah, it probably got caught on something because one, one strand of red yarn is ripped and I probably can fix it. But the thing is that it doesn't fit. It doesn't stay on her head. It keeps sliding off because her head is bigger now and she has more hair. 
and I don't know should I take it out and reuse the yarn or kind of no point of donating it because it has a hole and then if I fix it it will like still be visible somewhat I don't know but then again is the yarn oh, a bit too used I could add a strand of more hair and reuse it I don't know is there a point of doing that what do I do with it no idea I could use the reuse the pom-pom this is a faux fur that I, I made myself uh, and here is mine here is mine it's a bit squished it's been in a storage it's a bit squished and wrinkly I could refresh it I could wash it and then brush it and mine has more hair and I think Sophia now wants more hair as well hello this is my December hat this is what I wear I'm the happy elf that walks around and makes people smile kids love me the birdie very fat birdie came to visit me yeah kids love me adults also comment on it as well it just puts people in the holiday spirits and that's what we do here <laughs> uh, I'm sometimes not in the holiday spirit but hat hat helps a lot makes people smile so um yeah I don't need a hat but my husband does and our bigger kiddo and Sophia and I started with Sophia's and I was thinking do I make hers pink because she's been asking for a pink hat or do I stick with classic red she keeps changing her mind one day she wants pink another day she wants red and now this morning she announced that she wants green and I do not have green yarn in my stash I do have some reds and pinks and now I don't know what do we do but I'll do the brim first and yeah this is my own pattern like a pattern hat recipe you just like basically knit a beanie and then you start doing decreases there long long decreases uh, I know I wanted to write it down but I just don't have the energy there are a lot of Christmas hats out there but none of them has this long at least the ones I've seen I like a bit longer tip that it would hang over your shoulder and mine has very very heavy pom-pom that I did with mohair and now oh, it's blowing out mohair and white yarn and this one I have had for several years. Maybe three. Maybe four. Oh, we could also do the... <laughs> uh, well, love knits at the same time. Yeah, I could show you this. Have never depilled it. The yarn was inexpensive drops mohair and drops merino extra fine here in mine. Sophia has had something else, some other merino. Uh, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. It's been washed a couple of times. Now it's wrinkly. I apologize. I, I need to steam it. It came out of storage. I actually, I was thinking of washing it. I think I was naughty and did not wash it before putting it away. And just in spring stuffed it in a box and that was it. I usually, I'm usually better at that. I usually wash the things and then put them away. But I think, yeah. I think this one I just stuffed in. I don't know why. <laughs> but it has held up very well. Now it's on your head. It doesn't get that much peeling. You don't go around rubbing your head. Uh, it's been washed several times. And depending like after in each of the season. Two or three times. Because I can't figure out how old it was. And here is the shape you can see. Like here I knit straight for a while. Uh, let me show you the secret. <laughs> Ribbing, then you knit straight for a short while and then like until it fits on your head and then you start doing the decreases and there you go. Yeah, and this was made with very inexpensive yarn and it has held up surprisingly well. Okay. There, now I have talked about everything, <laughs> except one more thing. I got this crazy, mad idea. I was thinking, do I share it with you or not? Because it, I know it sounds crazy. Well, long story, <laughs> long story. I, I wanted my, for myself a woolly, like a wool coat, fabric coat. And I was thinking it would be nice in a bouquet. 
like yeah and i look through all the stores all the online stores and there are a lot of them because bouclay is in style everybody does bouclay every dog does bouclay now uh, me too <laughs> um and the ones that are in the reasonable price range are polyester 100 percent with a horrible cheap shiny slippery lining and still they cost over 100 euros and they are like they are shiny and I don't know and probably they don't feel nice can't touch them had one in our store it was pink and it it didn't feel good it won't be warm it does not look good and it costs 120 euros so no thank you and then I I tried to look what do you get for more money and for like three to four hundred euros you basically got this get the same thing with like 10 maybe 20 percent of wool if you're lucky but same cheap shiny lining and <laughs> And come on, for a price of cheap coat, I can get a ton of yarn. A ton of yarn. And I got this idea. Is it crazy if I try to knit myself a winter coat? Not that I have time at the moment. or But I got that idea at night. Like, I was, I think, falling asleep. And then it was in my head. You need to try to knit yourself a winter coat. <laughs> uh can you guess, did I cast one on? I'm trying it out. I'm not saying it's going to work out, but we are trying it out. And I absolutely don't have time to do that. So I have done it now in a couple of nights. And <laughs> I cast on. It's stiff. So I'm doubting myself. I've been consulting my husband. Like, what do you think? And he's saying, yeah. Looks like a coat. Feels like a coat. I'm not sure if the proportions are right, but I'm knitting myself a wool coat with a boucle. And then the second yarn. I had to do it straight away, so I had to use what I had in my stash. Ideally, yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you the yarn. So this is just undyed DK weight boucle, which is merino. Super wash. 100% merino. Can you guess my second yarn? I'm holding it double also. Experts? Yarn? Wool? Fluff fiber experts? Do you know what this is? It's late loppy. Held double. So I'm holding two strands of late loppy by Istex. Icelandic wool, which will give me warmth. And two strands of boucle, which will give me the nice texture, a bit of softness, and this fuzz. Crazy, right? I'm holding four strands of yarn together. And I'm using like six and a half. Six and a half. I don't know. I can't see the size. Six and a half millimeter needles. I think I tried on six. It was too small. And seven was too big. So I went with six and a half. I had them on my, I had the shorties interchangeables. Uh, <laughs> and I'm actually using a ready pattern as a model. It's not, it's a cardigan pattern, but I'm knitting a coat with it. I I went through my library and I had a Andy pattern by Junko Okamoto. And that's what I'm using as a base for this. I'm a bit adjusting the numbers because my gauge is not like that and I need it to be more loose. I need more space than just a coat because like I might wear, not a coat, a cardigan. I might wear a cardigan underneath my coat. So I'm I'm, I'm playing with it. I'm adjusting. But you, you will get the general vibe if you look at that pattern. I love Asian designers because they are very generous with ease. And yeah, it might look like another simple raglan pattern, but it's not. It kind of is and it kind of is not because it gives you interesting shaping. It gives you different proportion. I don't know, can you see it here? But look at that. That is not your basic raglan. There is your raglan line. And then there are interesting increases that help with the shaping. It's very stiff at the moment. But I think it has to be. Because I want, it to, we I want to wear it as a coat. Am I crazy? I know. I know. I'm, I always get these ideas. And then I just roll with it. We will make it work. I'm very determined. I want 
this coat because I can't buy a ready one. It, it upsets me. They make coats out of garbage and I don't want to wear garbage for a lot of money. Yeah, because polyester is not going to keep you warm in minus 20. I'm sorry. Or, okay, this is probably not minus 20 coat, but in minus 10 Celsius. And they sell them as winter coats. And I do not agree. So, uh, my life would be easier if I would knit it with Alofa Sloppy, which is like double from Lit Loppy. Then it would be just one strand of yarn. But I had this, so I'm using it. If I need to hold it double, I'll hold it double. So, crazy? <laughs> you love me for that, right? You're here for this. For insane ideas and me trying on something. Let's start the trend of knitted coats. Huh? <laughs> like with the granny squares, but now it's a knit coat. That's what's in this season in Hobbit land. <laughs> if you want to be a fashionable hobbit, you need a knitted wool coat. <laughs> I don't know. I was obsessed with the idea that I need a bouclet coat. And I couldn't buy one. So we're making one. Keep your fingers crossed for me that this works out. I'm soon going to be separating for the sleeves and then we will see. How does it look? Does it look absolutely ridiculous? It feels like there is a lot of fabric on the back at the moment, but it might be just fine. I think I need it just a bit deeper. If it would be cardigan, I would probably separate now, but I think just a few more centimeters, just to, to have a nice distance there that I could actually fit other knits underneath it. Yeah, that I could wear just my little oppy sweater or like nudity and sweater, this on top and some nice shawl hat and I'm good to go. I'm not afraid of frost. It looks, it looks luxurious. It, it looks luxurious. I love the fabric. It's gonna eat a ton of yarn. I can tell you already. I had 10 balls of this in my stash. I think now I'm I'm now on ball number four or five. And I think I will need to get another bag of Let Loppy. It comes in bags of 10. And that would give me a kilo of yarn. Plus this. I'm now on the second skein. 100 gram skein of the boucle. It's gonna eat a lot of yarn, but I'm prepared for that. I, I kind of knew that, that I'm fine if I'm in a budget of a cheap coat, yarn-wise. Little loppy. What does it cost now? Like 480 a ball. Yeah, 10 balls, 48 euros. We're cutting it close with that, but I don't know actually how much I'll need. It could be that I don't need 20 balls. 20 balls is just a kilo. No? Oh, well. I'll let you know later. Maybe this does not work out once I try it on and then it needs to be frogged and now I showed it to you and now we need to figure it out. Okay. <laughs> you will hold me accountable, right? Uh, yeah. There. So, do I have purchases or acquisitions? My fiber advent arrived, but I'm not going to show it to you quite yet because I haven't opened the box yet. And then I have a non-yarny acquisition. Has anybody noticed? Has anybody noticed something new that I'm sitting a bit higher? Has anybody noticed my new chair? <laughs> it's my new non-yarny, but very much, very much this room related acquisition. Look at it. I went to buy some bulbs and batteries. And I came home with a new chair. <laughs> because because I'm weak. They had one piece. And I, I had to bring it home. Because it's 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 a, it's a little sheepy thing. Sheepy chair. And it's nice and comfy. And look how, how cozy I am here. <laughs> how cozy I am here in my in my little chair with my with my beautiful throw. Uh I'm just knitting here. I need a, a better light. I have fairy lights there. Can you see them? Probably not, but yeah. So, and the kiddo got back his chair because the gray chair I've been using here is initially from our son's like nursery when he was a baby. It was there and the, yeah, the gray Ikea chair. And now he got 
it back and he's very happy we fit it in his room in one corner and it's his reading slash hangout chair and he goes cuddles up under his crochet blankie uh and he just loves it he's like it's like his own little safe nest yeah that's where i find him in the evenings before going to bed he's just there reading comics or nibbling his phone or like something Anyways, everybody has a chair now, except Sophia, and Sophia wants one. Okay, she has a swinging chair, but yeah. <laughs> we had a bit of a chair drama here, but her room has no space because she has a play kitchen there and we cannot fit a chair. And she's not ready to give up her play kitchen yet, so... And she doesn't have to, but yeah, she could use the living room furniture or come hang out in my chair. So I have a new chair. It just happened. I felt like some special pre-vlogmas treat for myself. It fits here nicely. It's a bit smaller and I, I just love it. So, uh, wanna do a word of the day? I'm not very prepared because I, I thought I wouldn't record this week, but then this just happened. I felt, I felt all right and I got up and I'm recording here today. Let's do word of the day. I'm watching outside and let's do word winter. Uh, in Finnish, that's talvi. Winter is talvi. And in Latvian, it's ziama. Talvi, ziama. <laughs> winter so <laughs> i'm so happy you enjoyed this little segment it was fun with the sheep and so many people commented and not the sheep we did the wool i wanted to do a sheep today but now we did the wool oh we will do the sheep next time i don't know what i'm talking about we did winter last year cut it out cut it out in editing probably won't but yeah Oh, I wanted to show you two more little acquisitions. Not really. <laughs> Kido made me uh, emotional support chickens. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Our son made me two chickens and they are very, very cute. One white, one brown from those plus plus thingies. So now my sheep has chicken friends. Except chickens are larger than the sheep, but yeah. There. I'm gonna sit under the blanket. This room is a bit cold, so I'm gonna sit here all cozy. Okay, let's do knit and chat. Ooh, if if you're here just for the knitting content, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. But now I will be talking about my personal life. <laughs> Let me cover myself up, get all cozy in my new chair. Oh, uh, so what I've been up to this week? Well, it was going well. <laughs> Everybody's back on their feet. My husband is better. Kiddo is at school, the, the bigger kiddo. Yeah, Sophia is doing great and she's always happy. And yeah. Anyways, it was going well up until Thursday afternoon when... Bruna had a dental appointment. We went there. We came home. Yeah, I was sitting up. I set up my chair and I set the other chair into his room. I was cleaning there a bit. And then I was taking something downstairs to the basement. I was walking on the steps and then just... <laughs> the world disappeared in front of my eyes. I don't know what happened. I slipped. I tripped. I... Anyways, I counted the steps with my spine. Uh, I went down like a sack of potatoes. I don't know what happened. And we have the the, the anti-slip strips on those wooden steps. Like everything. It's not possible just to... I don't know. I've been suffering from low blood pressure again lately. So maybe that affected me. I don't know. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh... Well, yeah, it did not go very well. I hit my teeth, I hit my head, the back of my head, my elbow and my back and everything was incredibly sore. I had horrible headache. I thought 
I have a probably very mild concussion. Wasn't throwing up or anything, but nothing is broken. I'm all right. I was on a bed rest yesterday, whole day. Was not even getting up. I mostly slept through the day. Did not really feel all right. And this morning, I'm I'm a bit better. My elbow and back are probably the worst. And I still have a mild headache. But that also could be from lack of coffee. Because yesterday, I only had one cup. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Luckily, it could have been worse, you know. And I posted on Instagram. And I got so many lovely messages and comments and thank you so much for caring and i thought i wouldn't be here this week like i wouldn't be able to record but luckily i am i am i'm feeling all right look except now i feel a bit foolish probably picked it up from a hospital when we went for the dental appointment it it was filled with sick people uh i don't know or maybe do I have different symptoms than my family had? Maybe I have symptoms. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have fever. Just my nose is stuffy and my throat is a bit rough, but we will see how this plays out. But general, generally, I'm feeling all right. My elbow is bothering me a lot. It does not look very, repre very representative. I'm not going to show it to you, but this one is not good. When I'm knitting on the sofa, I put a cushion under and I can't put it on hard surfaces. And yeah, and the back, back took a bit damage. Okay, enough about that. I'm okay. I'm okay. No need to worry about me. I'm, <laughs> we'll live. Uh, yeah, that was short story of my week and then i've been casting things on because i just i decided if I cast them on i will have to work them if they are ready there for me cast on even if i do a couple of rows then it's it's easier just to pick them up and work on them whenever i have a moment yeah yeah I'm trying to get through my Christmas list. It's quite a list, but it's all just for the family. So if I don't finish something, it's not the end of the world. But I I would really love to do the hats and the socks. And everything else, like, not, not that important. If I don't finish some of my things, it really doesn't matter. It can always go to next year. I'm very excited about the holidays. And I still need to figure out the gifts for everyone. Sophia actually has a list. She wants yarn and she wants a yarn bowl because I've been using mine when knitting on the sofa. Yeah, I love my yarn bowl. I use it all the time. Mine was, yeah, made by a wonderful wood worker. Wood, like a, how do you call it? Wood turner. And yeah, mine is very, very lovely. I can't get Sophia saved because that person doesn't doesn't make bowls, I think, anymore. He had a slight burnout uh, some years ago, and I'm not sure where is he back. But probably there is not enough time to order one, so I will, I will just have to look and buy her a, a yarn bowl from somewhere, but I think that's not a problem. Yeah, that's, that's all she wants for Christmas. Uh... But we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. I also want to cast on a shawl. But I probably don't have a time time right now. I'm very excited about everything. And we will start decorating on 1st of December. But you will see that in the Vlogmas. I also sign, signed up for the wreath, uh, wreath class that I did last year. Like a course where we did the big big evergreen and eucalyptus wreath i still have it by the way it's now hanging outside it's not dropping needles it just turned yellow beautiful and my friend is coming with me <laughs> i i asked want to go she said yeah i'm off work that sunday and we're going to a wreath class next is it already next week sunday so i need to be in condition i need to be in condition before that so and then I ordered myself a festive cookbook. It's more like about baking things. Yeah, sweets, desserts. 
I think baking things, but that's still on the way. That's coming and I want to try something new this year. We usually just do very traditional things like a fruit cake and gingerbread cookies and, and little puff pastry stars, Christmas stars with a bit of jam in, in the center. Yeah, we want to do those this weekend. Kids have asked and we bought puff pastry. I don't make my own puff pastry. We buy it frozen because life, life is too short. <laughs> it takes forever and then it's anyway eaten in 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know what else except me lumping around the house. <laughs> I don't know. Ground has a very thin layer of snow, which feels nice. There's straight away more light. It gets dark very early now. It gets dark, I think, around 5, maybe already before 5 in the evening. And it's just gonna get worse from here. I've been taking my vitamins, taking my D vitamin, and yeah. And my hubby got me a brighter light for my knitting spot that... I'm using now and I feel generally more more cheerful it helps uh, I don't think I have anything else do you have any have you started already the holiday preparations I know if you're in the United States you're now preparing for Thanksgiving that's your big thing but what about the rest of the world have you already started <laughs> Because I I feel like I want to decorate. And it usually doesn't happen till like mid-December. I don't know. I'm not... I don't know what's happening this year. Who am I? I feel like something, something has changed. I don't know what. Again, a bird. A very fat little bird is there. <laughs> Looking at me. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I just feel excited for the holidays. My mom is coming. She already has tickets for mid-December, like late December, mid-late December. Does that make sense? Yeah, so very excited. I think, okay, I think I need to wrap it up. I feel like my voice is trying to disappear. I'll go drink something warm and I'll try not to get worse than I already am. <laughs> But thank you so much for being here with me. I'm, I needed this. I really, really needed this because that fall took took my spirit a bit down. But it also slowed me down physically, which made me a bit of thinking. Gave me a bit of thinking time, which is a good thing because life is so fast. It just, it just goes, and sometimes you don't you don't have time to just be still for a moment and it was good not the best way to get extra knitting time but yeah i, I don't recommend <laughs> just just take a break if you if you need one don't don't go fumbling down the stairs okay i love my chair do you do you love my chair i love it i'm in love with it it wasn't even that expensive it was just spontaneous purchase i wanted a chair i got a chair who i don't know <laughs> don't judge me <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm, I'm gonna now say my goodbyes and go traditionally for a cup of coffee. And I hope I will see you next week that nothing, nothing happens here. That everything is good and steady. And yeah, tell me about your winter knits or holiday knits or spring knits if you're in the southern hemisphere. Is it already summery down there? Because it's quite wintry up here. <laughs> okay. Take care and craft a lot and much love to you wherever you are. Bye. Hey, bye.